Hello, hello. All right. Do I have a voice? Okay. I don't think we can fit anybody on the third floor in this room. So we have got a packed room. I am so, so excited. You know, over the years, you look at, at moments when you can look back on and say, this was a moment that changed the course of where our company is gone. I think back to the email that, uh, go ahead, if you want to. I think back to the time when I first met Sean Hannity, the impact that had with us. I think back to when I, I shot an email to Barbara Corcoran and she actually replied. I think of many different moments that we've had and different game changers, different people we've worked with. And what's really cool is that at times you can hire, you can spend the money to get a motivational speaker and then you never really see them again. You don't really have any contact with them. And you hope that they have, so what they say will have some relevance to, to what, what our group has. So when I began to think, okay, what's the next level? What's the next thing? Besides just the message, when we get people to a website, what's going to take it to the next level and do something that nobody else in the real estate industry is doing that'll be cutting edge, that'll help convert more business, not just create more business? And so as I began to look at digital marketing, I didn't realize what a powerhouse our next guest is. He is, well, I'll, I'll save his thunder for his presentation, but let me just tell you, spending decades at understanding, perfecting direct response marketing, that's the business we're all in that we want to take to the next level. So please give an awesome round of applause. Now, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to watch his sizzle reel first. And then when the time comes and you'll know it, because you'll hear that funky shark music. <laughs> when that music plays, then give it up for Kevin Harrington. Let's dim the lights and let's go. Meet Kevin Harrington. With over 500 products launched and generating over $5 billion in product sales in over 100 countries, Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial as seen on TV Pioneer and original shark on the Emmy Award winning TV show Shark Tank. Kevin creates massive brands by combining great products with superstar talent like Kim Kardashian, 50 Cent, Kathy and Paris Hilton, Kris Jenner, CeeLo Green, George Foreman, Montel Williams, Jack LaLanne, Flo Rida, Hulk Hogan, Billy Mays, Paula Abdul, and Tony Little. My brand now is worth over $3 billion. Uh, so my advice to everybody, if you even have an idea, you'd want to go to Kevin Harrington. Kevin has been featured on 2020, CNN, Fox Business, Bloomberg, Jim Cramer's The Street, MTV, Good Morning America, the CBS Morning News, The Today Show, The View, and The Daily Double on Jeopardy. Now the last clue, back to the Shark Tank. I'm Kevin Harrington. A renowned speaker, Kevin has appeared on stage for organizations like AT&T, Microsoft, and MIT. Kevin is a pioneer of the direct response industry and has risen to nearly iconic status over the years. Kevin helped to found EO, the Entrepreneur's Organization, an entrepreneur for over 40 years. Kevin has built 20 businesses to over $100 million each. That's why he's the original shark from Shark Tank, the billion dollar man, Kevin Harrington. Let's give Kevin a warm welcome. It's just a real pleasure to be here. Matt, I want to thank you, and um, I want to just say that but by the way, this is not Matt and myself, okay? <laughs> okay, Mr. Wonderful, and I, and I think he's been here. Um, yeah. Now, people ask me about the other sharks, and I'm gonna tell a couple stories today, but Mr. Wonderful, I'd I, I like to ask, you know why he calls himself Mr. Wonderful? Because nobody else will, all right? <laughs> he loves to call him, every morning he kisses the mirror, right? No, but you know, what some folks don't realize is the reason he is kind of the tough guy like that is he's created his own brand to be the tough guy. He raises capital and uses the capital to invest in deals. So if he does a, a terrible deal on Shark Tank, 
people that have invested with him say, wait, what's he doing with my money, right? So um, we will talk a little bit about brand building here in just a second, but um, I wanna share a little bit about my story because Matt, it was a great introduction, thank you. For 35 years, I've been shooting video and um, I started back in, in the early days as a, as a young entrepreneur when, when I was um, uh, 11 years old, actually working inside my father's restaurants. Uh, there I am at Harrington's Irish Pub. And then uh, my father was a mentor to me, and I was very fortunate. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, he said, be an entrepreneur. And so how many entrepreneurs do we have in the room here today? Okay, wow, fantastic. This is exactly the kind of crowd that I love to speak to. And um, for me, it goes all the way back in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I was sealing driveways in high school. And um, if there was water in the cracks in the driveway and it froze, they would triple the size of the cracks. And you know, we're all in the real estate business here and we realize some of the things that happen to homes. And so I would knock on the doors and and tell people, let me show you the cracks. We'd seal them and then beautify that driveway. That was in high school, but when I got to college, I'm one of six kids in my family, so uh, eight of us shared one home, and by, by the time it got to me, number four, my father said, hey, you're gonna have to pay your own way through college. So um, college, books, uh, a place to live, uh, utilities, car, insurance, everything. It's, it's pretty significant for somebody 18 years old to have to come up with that money. So I started a heating and air conditioning company then my freshman year in college. And so what I was doing was actually buying all the new homeowner transactions. Uh, you guys would sell the house. I'd get the, the name of that person. We would call them, welcome them to the neighborhood and say, hey, look, that furnace, it's, you know, it's got a, uh, a dangerous side to it every now and then. We're gonna come out, give you a free safety check and clean the furnace absolutely free. So we were a startup company. So we were sort of data mining in, in the day. This was back in the, in the mid 70s. So uh, heating and air conditioning was, was good for me during college. And then I wanted to take it to the next level. And that's when I said, you know, what, how do I get access to more information about more industries, more businesses? And um, I realized that being a broker, a real estate broker, specializing in the sale of businesses could be a very interesting thing for me. So that's what I started. I started a business brokerage company, went to, got my license, became a broker, and we were selling the real estate but we also specialized in the sale of the business. Anybody here do businesses also, or just mostly real estate? Just one, one in the back, so two. So this gave me really good access to lots of information about many different industries, because I had hundreds of listings, pizza parlors, delicatessens, flower shops, laundromats, et cetera, and so uh, it, it, was, it was, I was seeing the books and records, because we had, financial statements, we had the leases, we had the percentages, the food costs, and all the cost to, to do business. We'd see businesses going up, we'd see them going down. And so at the closing table, I'd be sitting there and I'd say, okay, you now own this business. Do you have insurance? Do you have an accountant? Do you have somebody to do your graphics or your advertising? And most often, the folks would say, no, but who do you recommend? And so I was referring them out to other folks. So that's when I said, I'm gonna lease a whole floor of an office building in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we called it the Small Business Center. And there we are. This is, it was a one-stop center for small businesses. I leased space to a lawyer, to an accountant, uh, to a, a graphics uh, person, et cetera. And we ended up opening up 30 of these around the country. So this was back in the early 80s, and I partnered with Entrepreneur Magazine. So sort of I call it my pre-shark days because I got a chance to also participate in some of these deals. I got a chance to get equity in some of the businesses. I would partner with them, et cetera, et cetera. So I um, had a lot of fun doing all of this, and this kind of leads to my television story because I, I bought a house, I was, I was young, started buying real estate, I was buying, a, I bought a two family and I bought an office building and I started getting into real estate. And so I, I'll never forget the very first time I heard about cable television. And so cable TV had just come to the market 
And how many remember black and white TV in the 60s and 70s, okay, right? Right, there was four or five channels. Uh, and I remember uh, remote controls. My father would say, Kevin, change the channel. I, I was the remote in the family, so, you know. Like, and I remember having to sometimes put a piece of aluminum foil in the, in the antenna to get better reception. But when cable TV came along, all of a sudden, the first channel package was 30 channels in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I'm from. So I said, wow, this is amazing. No longer just kind of ABC, CBS, NBC. We've got CNN, 24 hours of news, and HBO, 24 hours of movies, MTV, 24 hours of music, um, ESPN, 24 hours of sports. I got to the Discovery Channel, and this is what was on the screen, colored bars. And so I'm like, I, I, I called the cable company, and I said, hey, I really love the cable package that I'm getting with one exception. There's nothing on channel 30. What, what's supposed to be there? It's the Discovery Channel. They said, oh, Discovery is a brand new channel. They don't have enough money to produce 24 hours a day of programming. So for six hours, that's all you're gonna see. And I'm like, wow, this is, now this is back in the early 80s. So um, I said to myself, There's a, here's an opportunity. Because again, here I am, mindset wise, I'm selling businesses. I'm, I'm selling flower shops and uh, restaurants. I'm going to the restaurant shows and I'm going to, I got a home and garden store for sale. So here I am at the Philadelphia Home Show and there's one booth and there's this huge crowd around the booth and there's a guy I could barely see in the, in the very front of the, of the booth and he's got a knife in his hand. He's cutting through a Coca-Cola can, cutting through a muffler, cutting through a pair of sneakers. It's called the Ginsu knife, he said. And, and, and it's two knives for 1995, and he's demoing it, and people are rushing him, buying the Ginsu knife set. And so I watched it, and I, and I tried to get up there to talk to him, I said, that was an amazing pitch. And so uh, when I finally, by the time I got there, he had already started the pitch all over again, the same set of words, right through the Coca-Cola can, right through the muffler, through the pair of sneakers, and that's why I said, he's saying the exact same thing. Four times I watched him, he got on break, I introduced myself, I said, hey, I'm Kevin Harrington, I'm an entrepreneur. That was an amazing pitch. Who are you? Tell me, what, what's this all about? How long have you been doing this? He said, Kevin, he said, you may like what you saw. He says, but I do this every day. And it, I do the same thing all day long. I'm here in Philadelphia. I'll be here for five days. Next week, I'm at the Iowa State Fair. And I've been doing this more than a dozen years. And that's when the light bulb finally hit for me. And I said, Arnold, I, I said, do you know about Discovery Channel? Six hours of nothing on this channel. And I said, why don't we film this presentation that you're making and we'll put it up, we'll cut a deal with Discovery and see what happens. And so that's what we did. And here's that original clip from the early 80s. Watch that. You take a tomato, the weight of the knife alone cuts that tomato. Let me ask you something. How many knives do you have at home this sharp? You could drop the tomato on top. Pretty sharp, right? Do you know what one young lady said? <laughs> Can you cut them thin? I said, thin, one tomato will last you all week long. Now, how many have ever seen that type of presentation before, right? Okay. So, yeah, you remember, right? So, um, this... It, as simple as it was, we only spent a couple thousand dollars filming it because, again, Arnold did this live, and he, you know it was one take. We shot the show, and it, we then decided, well, let's send it around the world, and we did. And this went on to do over five hundred million dollars. Let's give Arnold a round of applause, okay? <laughs> All right, uh, and. I didn't really realize what I, you know, this is the creation now of this whole world of infomercials. And so, um, but here I was in, in the early 80s, uh, sitting there with the with one show, we had Tony Little and we had Jack LaLanne and then we had George Foreman. And so we had this library of shows, but they were all a bell-shaped curve. They would perform and then eventually they would stop, pretty much just like a movie, right? So um, when movies go into the theaters, they're strong and strong and strong, and then all of a sudden they die, but what do they do? They go international, and that's what I said. We took this and ran it all around the world because I started going to the same shows that the movie people go to, the Cannes Film Festival, which is actually just this week right now over, over in, uh, in France. And so I, this is where I met all the TV stations 
on a global basis. And so um, if there was bars on the screen in the US, there was gonna be bars on the screen in Latin America, in Europe, in the Middle East, in Asia. So I, I went over to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, cut a deal with the Sheikh to put shows on the ART, Arab radio television, and we were on all across Europe with, the, with Rupert Murdoch and the, and the, the um, Sky Channel, and we were in TV Tokyo in Japan, et cetera, et cetera. But what we were doing is creating amazing videos, videos that sell, right? So, um, in fact, when we, dis when we went to like Germany or Holland or wherever, people would say, well, that Tony little guy, we'd love to have him here, but maybe, why don't you just get his product and maybe we'll find a Dutch Tony Little to do this. And it's, that would be like recreating a movie though, right? Because it, there's an art to putting these together, there's a sales pitch. And so we said, no, we just, it's very simple. With movies, they dub them in the local language. With infomercials, we dub them in the local language. So we had a, the ability to take an infomercial, whether it's Arnold Morris or Tony Little. Well, let me show you Tony in Dutch, for example. Voeten stevig. Zie je hoe ze haar handen op haar midriff heeft? Niet achter je hoofd. Nee, niet achter je hoofd. Ze moet zien wat ze aan het doen is. Niet zoals jij, ja? Omhoog komen, strak maken, neer. Met spanning omhoog, dat is het enige wat je hoeft te doen. Gaat is om dat de niks? Dat is het enige wat je moet doen om de rechterbuikspieren te isoleren. Wat is die grafiek daar beneden? Dat is de grafiek die laat je 30 seconden per oefening op beginnen. Very complicated language. All he said was, this is how you do a crunch. Okay. <laughs> so, like, yeah. so, um, so we had literally a hundred plus infomercials running in dozens of countries. We took this company public and we went public on the New York Stock Exchange. We came out at a dollar a share. And within a couple of years, we we're at $20 a share. We had a $550 million market cap. And it was pretty, pretty fantastic feeling to be shooting these videos, getting them um, out on a global basis. And of course, uh, you know, I'm gonna, as I talk a little bit about my background, it, it has to include a couple stories about Shark Tank. So that's when I got the phone call from Mark Burnett. Mark said, hey, Kevin, I've got this new show that I'm shooting. I was on the phone with him and he said, can you come out here to LA? I wanna tell you all about it. And I said, Mark, I said, man, it, you're, you, you're the, you do The Voice, you're The Survivor, all these great shows, that's me. And I said, well, can you tell me anything about it at all? He said, get out here, sign an NDA, we'll tell you all about it when you get here. It's called Shark Tank, don't worry, you're gonna love it. So I got off the phone, I told my wife, I said, hey, Crystal, you won't believe it, Mark Burnett called, wants me to come out, and, uh, and she said, well, wh what's going on? I said, I, he's shooting a new show called Shark Tank, um, and she said, what's it all about? I said, he wouldn't tell me, just said, I gotta get out there. She says, I know why he won't tell you. What does he do to the people on that Survivor show? Why do you wanna be on Shark Tank, okay? I'm like, hmm, that's interesting, right? So, uh, and by the way, the very first, we sh I shot the pilot with all the, the sharks, and they had live shark tanks with live sharks when we shot the pilot. And I guess it was very expensive to do that. So after that, they didn't continue with the live sharks. But the supposedly, if you gave a bad pitch or didn't get money, they were gonna throw people in the tank, okay? So um, probably separate from the sharks, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, it's, I had a lot of fun on Shark Tank. I have one more quick story, and I think some of you know, uh, and, and know Robert Herchevik, and this is Robert's wedding. And so just to set the record straight, Barbara is the sweetest shark. So let, let's give Barbara a round of applause. She's an amazing, amazing woman. Uh, it, it, she, she called me recently and, and she said, I got all these products, Kevin, can you come up? We got to meet. So um, I, said, I said, you know, we were at the wedding uh, not too long ago. There's Robert and I out there um, playing, uh, smoking a couple cigars and um, smoking a couple cigars. And there in the middle uh, is Damon and myself and, 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 and Robert. So the story here is we all know that Robert went on Dancing with the Stars, right? Because one day the producers of Dancing with the Stars were over at Shark Tank and they said, hey, who would like to be on that show? And Robert said, yes. My wife said, no, I don't want you to do that. Okay, and I said, why, what's the problem? She said, they dance way too close on that show. Okay, who did Robert marry? That's Kim Johnson from Dancing with the Stars, okay? And, 
at the wedding, my wife said, I told you they got a little close on that show, okay? <laughs> I said, and you're never going to be on that show either. I said, yeah, don't worry. So, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. And by the way, the last part of the wedding, uh, Kim is from Australia. It was her birthday that night. At midnight, they wheeled out a birthday cake. Thank you. And um, on came... Um, uh, Olivia Newton-John from her home country and saying happy birthday. So uh, pretty amazing. And now they have twins, so let's give them a round of applause also. Okay, so a um, lot of fun. I did 175 segments on Shark Tank, had tremendous uh, fun with all the sharks. And, I, you know, I think this is so far all the good stuff. And uh, thanks for being with me here today. And Matt, I appreciate having an opportunity to speak to a, a room full of real estate professionals. But as we all know, things are happening out in the marketing world. And for me, things were starting to turn because we used to have a lot of success. I'm the guy that started the As Seen on TV space, the infomercial. We were in retail stores all over the place. But because uh, you know, we would start on TV, then we'd move them to retail. We'd take them out on an international level. A couple things started happening. Disruption. Um, just like there's a little bit of disruption in the real estate industry kind of happening a little bit. But for us, this is what started happening is real estate, rather um, retail, started plummeting. Um, it, I mean, we all know about a lot of bankruptcies, Sports Authority and uh, Gymboree and all this, a lot of the stores are having some difficulties, right? Um, and then couple that with the fact that Amazon, so we were putting all these products on television. What were people doing? They were going straight to Amazon. They weren't buying them off of television anymore. And, and so we saw our sales starting to drop. And it, it was not a fun time. And, it, and so, um, you know, there was disruption in, in some of the different other marketplaces out there, but we were dealing with retail issues. We were dealing with People were seeing it on TV, and then we were driving sales to Amazon, but, but this is the thing. There was knockoffs on Amazon, selling it for lower prices and things like this. So I remember there was a point during all of this that I said, we're really hitting bottom here with, with our business. And this is a project that we did. I want you to watch this video, and I'll tell you what happened. Now you can put on your favorite music and have fun dancing all those extra inches and pounds away. Presenting the one-of-a-kind, low-impact, calorie-burning, muscle-toning, total body exercise that's fun, fast, and easy. The revolutionary new twist sizer from the man who got the whole world twisting, Chubby Checker. Well, one piece of advice. If a man named Chubby asks you to do a fitness project, say no, okay? <laughs> I said yes. <laughs> and so, I mean, it, this was, um, we thought celebrities are selling. But again, we could put these things up. Retail wasn't working. They're going to Amazon to try to find something similar, cheaper, better, whatever. And we were having a tough time. So uh, I, I remember, I mean, here is, this is the, the as seen on TV logo here. I created As Seen on TV Inc., As Seen on TV.com. We had thousands and thousands of products in tens of thousands of stores, but we literally felt like our business was burning to the ground. Hey, yeah. Uh, has anyone had a bad day like that before? I mean, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, on Mondays, I would walk in. It used to be the, the positive day because we did a lot of our activity over the weekend. But on Mondays, I would walk in and feel like this. It just, it, it wasn't a happy feeling. So, um, you know, I said to myself, I've got to do something. And, and I think... Um, I know that Matt has been, has been putting amazing programs together for the real estate industry. And so for me, uh, these are new things that Matt's created for real estate. And we're going to be talking about one of them here today that we've created with Matt and, and very excited about. But um, it's, it's kind of like this. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And that Tony Robbins is a big proponent of this. Henry Ford was saying it way back. And so I realized I had to do something. And so I, I really am, am very, um, I'm very convinced that mentors can do a lot for 
entrepreneurs. And so my father was a mentor. I had Zig Ziglar at one point as I was learning how to sell as a mentor. Uh, Mark Burnett was helping mentor uh, on building brands and things like this. And so I had an opportunity. I reached out to some friends and said, hey, look, I, I need somebody to, to, that I can sit down with and get some great advice because there's been some changes in the marketplace, right? Um, and so I actually was, was fortunate enough to be able to go meet Richard Branson and go hang out at his famous little island, Necker Island. And so um, has anyone ever been to Necker Island, by the way? Uh, and show of hands. So one person, oh, great. Um, it, it, it's not easy to get to. You, gotta, you take one plane, another plane, a boat, and it's not like you can just jump in an Uber and go down there, right? It's, it's pretty complicated. But um, I had a chance, literally, to hang out with Richard. And so when we got started, um, I, was, I went in. There was this one big room that had 16 seats around the room. And Richard said, take any seat you want, just a couple of us. And so I sat down and he said, Kevin, he said, that's an amazing seat you chose. Nelson Mandela was sitting in that seat just about two weeks ago. And so talking about world peace. And I said, well, I'm not talking about much more than the Snuggie, Richard. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> this isn't going to be so high level, okay? <laughs> so he said, well, no problem. He says, I've been following what you're doing. I've been watching all these shows and I've, you know, a pretty amazing business, but I understand you're in a transition now and let's, let's come out of here with a game plan. So there's three things that I came up with with Richard and that's what I'm gonna share for the next 10 minutes or so right now because this was a game changer for me because R Richard, he's a very brilliant guy and sometimes you need someone from the outside to come in and tell you what you should be doing, right? And somebody that's got a lot of experience. And so the first thing that we came up with was we had been doing the same thing for many years. We, we had some great TV people and radio people in the business uh, working for us, but as, as things were shifting around, there was a lot of growth in the digital areas. Facebook was taking off, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, Google, YouTube, et cetera. So, were you do? Were you, you know, Richard said, are you doing anything to go after those consumers? I said, that's a good question. No, we're not. You know, we're really just a television company. And so he said, well, if you always do what you've always done, right? You're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. And so you really need to start taking it to another level and get a new dream team, as he called it. And so, so this was step number one. You got to surround yourself with some new experts, some tech people, some operational people, digital advertising gurus, right? I mean, I think there's a lot of tech stuff happening in the world of real estate right now. So this is sort of like, you know, don't we need to get up to speed on digital and what's going on, right? I mean, my, my son is in the back of the room. Brian, just raise your hand back there. He's 30 years old, went to Penn State University. And, and Brian said, Dad, he's been with me now almost 10 years out of college. And he says, Dad, he said, yes, digital is where it's at because, you know, there's, there's some changes happening out there in the marketplace. So good advisors can help you do a lot of things. They can help set up strategic meetings, bring on more advisors, make introductions, maybe help you raise some capital, whatever it might be, get some extra financing sources. But for me, it was all about really transitioning into this digital space. And so on that note, that was step number two, is embracing digital because we had not done that. And, and, and by embracing digital, because there's, you know, when you're on fire, you need to rewire, and, and we were strictly a television company at this point. We needed to really transition. And so this one slide will kind of put it into perspective for you. It took radio 38 years to get to 50 million listeners. TV got to 50 million viewers in 13 years. The internet got there in four years, 50 million users. iPod 3, Facebook 2, Pokemon Go app, got 50 million downloads in 15 days. Pretty impressive. The next slide, Ed Sheeran, 375 million downloads in one week. Do you think the world's moving a little faster, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so here I was, um, I'm thinking, am I just stupid? Like, wh wh why haven't I tuned into this, right? I mean, so I started asking around and I found out, I mean, look, 
it isn't just me. Companies actually like Time Inc., Time Magazine. They had declining sales for the last six, seven years. 37 magazines, Sports Illustrated, Time, Southern Living, Southern Cooking, et cetera. They're plummeting. And actually, they just recently had to merge with Meredith, and Sports Illustrated is now up for sale. Uh, you know, it's, things, are, things are happening in that uh, magazine business. So um, I said, well, okay, it's not just me. Uh, others, you know, these are big, you know, these, these are billion-dollar companies. So I do an annual event with Steve Forbes, and I said to Steve, uh, hey, Steve, have you seen Times charts of, 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 of decline? I said, how are you doing, Steve? So this is the event I do every year in, in July this year. Uh, it's at the Paris Hotel, July, middle of July, second week. We, we have about 2,000 people that come and hang out and do some pretty cra crazy things. But I said to Steve, can you share with me what's going on inside Forbes? And he said, Kevin, he said, it's the exact opposite actually of time. He said, we went from a couple million readers a month to 50 million readers a month. And I said, wow, how'd you do that? He said, we have we started using the, what we call freelance contributors, 1,500 freelance contributors. And so he said, hey, would you like to be a contributor? I said, tell me how it works. He said, you give us a weekly article and we'll publish it on Forbes.com. And you're gonna get all that exposure. You're gonna be a Forbes contributor, all the uh, power of that. He said, there's only one thing that we, we require. You have to send this to your followers also on a weekly basis. So I have close to 800,000 followers and all the different channels, Twitters and LinkedIn's and Facebook and Instagram. And so if I send it out, yeah, I was sending it out to everybody and so was so were the other 1,500 people on a weekly basis. And this is what supercharged Forbes magazine. So he was getting 300 plus stories a day. And they, in 98 years, Forbes had their best year because they were embracing digital and doing the things that it took to connect through social media, through influencers, through these contributors. And absolutely the highest readership during that time also. So this is step number two, embracing digital. Last step that I'm gonna share, and then we're gonna get into some of the things that, that we're talking about here today, um, is that, I'm, again, I'm sitting there with Richard Branson, and he says, Kevin, you, you, you've worked with some amazing people, and uh, you know, George Foreman, and he already was a, a great boxer, and Jack LaLanne, and you know, he was pretty famous, but that Tony Little guy, what was his story? I said, well, he was a personal trainer, really, from St. Pete, Florida, a buddy of mine, and I said, when I met Tony, I said, Tony, I'm in this in TV business, do you have anything you'd love to sell? And he said, sure, he says, I'll get you some videos, I've got, uh, I've got a, an ab product, and I've got this. Well, we did target training videos, and we did the ab isolator, then we did the gazelle, and all of a sudden, Tony Little, we were doing hundreds of millions and then over a billion, and then this brand was built around Tony Little. So, so, so Richard's saying, but so Kevin, so you've gone out, you built Billy May's brand, you built Tony Little's brand, you built all these brands. Did you ever build your own brand? And, and I said, you know what? No, I didn't. We were just doing what we do. We were happy to be making the profits from the shows, but he said, well, you really need, this is your next step. Step number three is how do you become a key person of influence and raise your profile by building your brand? And that's what I want to talk about a little bit right now because um, I said to myself, what, you know, what do I need to do? It's, this is a new digital world, right? So the, the first thing was maybe I got to start creating some content. And the first step was actually writing a book. And my first book was called Act Now. How I Turn Ideas into Million Dollar Products. And so it, this book, was, it, it gave me a chance to build some credibility, stand out from the competition, and enhance my reputation as an expert. And I started creating amazing content, shooting video, actually also started on radio. Radio is very, very powerful in many ways. So um, I would get, I got on one radio interview, then I got on five, then I got on 25, but I, I required one thing. I said, I'll do the radio show, but when it's all over, I wanna be able to send people to a website to get a free chapter of my book, 
my new book, because that's what I'm here to talk about. I'm not selling anything. It's a free chapter. They can download it on a particular website. And so they, every radio station said, no problem. You tell some great stories, we'll send them to your website when you're done. So all of a sudden, I'm on 100 plus radio interviews, having an amazing time because it, it didn't cost me anything. I didn't have to travel. I'm sitting in my home doing these interviews and, and literally sending tens of thousands of people through this digital format. And so this was the beginning of me starting to build my brand and create content. And also, I would, in many cases, a lot of the radio guys were starting to shoot video too, by the way. So we would start shooting video along with it and, and taking that video to the next level. In fact, this, it was the book, this book came out in 2008 and it was the radio shows and the other things that I started doing, which was the reason when I talked to Mark Burnett, I said, Why? I got a phone call from Mark Burnett right when the book came out because I was all over the internet powering my brand. And you just never know what little things and how they can become big things. Because the power of video, as I was creating this around uh, the internet, video is so powerful because it, it gives you a chance to connect it. People, when they're watching video, I see a lot of you are taking pictures. Users, in the last 30 days, rather, more video content has been uploaded in the last 30 years of television programming. Pretty amazing. Now, I'm not going to take up a lot of time here because I'm going to be introducing at some point my video partner because we're going to talk about something very exclusive for everybody here. But um, it, it, Corey Bergeron, my, my video uh, partner, Pitch Video, is here today. Um, he's going to be able to tell you all about how the power of video, websites are 50 times more likely with video to appear on, uh, on the home page, on the first page rather. So, so this was for me an, an, an unbelievable next step and it involved again, what did I say? Creating content, radio, TV, trade journals, newspapers, speaking at trade shows, speaking at chambers of commerce. Yesterday, I was in Orlando, Florida at the Hispanic, Orlando Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. 350 people, pretty amazing crowd. How did all this happen? I spoke at the Tampa Chamber um, a, a couple of years ago and, and the woman said, hey, Kevin, once a year, we get all the chambers in the state of Florida together here and this year it's gonna be in Tampa. Love for you to speak at our annual uh, uh, trade show and with all the chambers, 27 chambers of commerce from the state of Florida. And would you like to keynote that group? And I did, and then I got an invite from seven more chambers. So uh, the Fort Myers Chamber, the Sarasota Chambers, the Orlando Chambers, the, the Hispanic Chamber, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's creating content, videotaping this, putting it up on the internet, slicing it into little pieces, and, and then using this to power my brand. And, and, and by the way, um, I then said, well, I got to start doing a podcast. And does anybody here, I, I know there's some people doing some great stuff. Anyone have a podcast here in the room? Just one, two, two people? Okay, three. About four or five. Okay, great. So um, I do a weekly podcast and I had one of them, some of them get 100,000, 200,000 views. One of them went viral. We had six million views on one of our podcasts just recently. So um, you just never know what can happen here. But again, what was I doing? Creating content, slicing it up, putting it on all parts of the internet uh, and, and powering the brand. In fact, the best example of somebody that's created tremendous content by shooting television, shooting video, is uh, a woman who became a billionaire. She was in the news and used to read the news and then she had her own show and just created lots of content Probably, does anyone know who I'm talking about? Oprah. Oprah Winfrey, right? Yeah, it worked for her. So, so these are some of the things that we started doing and just unbelievable success that, that came from this. So the next slide, it's a, I, I don't want to scare anybody here because I got to give a little bit of education. Matt said, teach them a little bit if you can, but this one is, so people say, what do you do with the people that were on that radio show? Because So what happened in television, we would put one commercial out. And yeah, people would order, but the millions of people would be seeing our shows. 
but we only got the names of the people that actually ordered. There was no capture of any of the data. So for 30 some years, I'm, I'm putting hundreds of millions of dollars in media out there, not capturing the, the data from the people that are watching. And so uh, I said, this is what we need to do with, with the radio leads. We need to start building funnels. And, and so a funnel is what, what I was doing on radio is they were watching, they were listening to the radio show. Hey, if you want a free chapter, go to this, this website. What they were going to was a funnel. And that funnel then led them to the next step, which was a tripwire inside the funnel. They tripped into a core offer. Are you familiar with some of this? Right, good. So, um, there, so then we have a core offer, and then there's email automation that's automatically gonna be responding back and forth as well as retargeting. So, so now, this is how we do everything. Because we don't, in the old days, we just start on TV like the chubby checker. No, we start on digital. We start on the internet. We start on Facebook, we start on Instagram. And so, for example, I, I brought one of my products and I'm gonna share one of the other ones. But um, you know, I think the, the, the best thing I can say is that marketing has definitely changed because marketing used to be one spot that would run for me over and over and over, same spot. But now we create dozens of spots. So like, for example, here's a product that I'm currently selling right now. And this is an eyeglass cleaner. It's called Peeps. And I don't know if anyone has seen this. You've seen it, right? Um, we've sold millions of these now. But the first step of this is to get all the dust off. Because if, if you rub your, your coat or your shirt, you're going to scratch the lenses. And then this opens up. And this is a double-sided carbon cleaning system that cleans both sides of your glasses simultaneously, and it goes into electrostatic charging station and goes in and out and ready to go again, ready, ready to roll. So, so we tried this on TV and it bombed. Didn't work because it's one spot hitting the masses. What we needed is something that would go to people that just bought glasses, that just bought sunglasses, people that needed the product, not pay for all the dollars of the people that didn't need it. So, so this is what we're all about now because marketing has changed. And I wanna say now also that messaging is changing too. And so when you think about what, what you guys have done in your space, Barbara has been amazing because I say there's three steps to a perfect pitch. You gotta tease, you gotta please, and you have to seize if you're gonna make the deal. If you're gonna make the sale, tease them, please them, seize them. Barbara's great, gets your attention. What we're gonna show you today is the please. We're gonna show you how to tell your unique story utilizing authentic video with amazing, powerful, testimonials in a very short little piece. Not, not 30 seconds, we gotta tell the story. We're gonna need a few minutes to do that. So it might be two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, but this is what we're here to share with you because marketing has changed, messaging has changed. And by the way, Barbara has done an amazing job. I know that she's been, um, she's a, I'm, I'm a great fan of hers and I know many of you have used her with great success and, 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 and this is a, it's a one-two punch if you continue to use some of the assets of Barbara. But when we show you what we've got, I think you're gonna see the C's is up to you because you're the one that's gonna have to close that deal, okay? So Barbara can tease it, we're gonna show you how to please it and now it's up to you to close it, okay? Um, and so, um, I mean, it's, it's, no, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, Facebook's got billions of users, 1,800 different target points. You can go in, you can target by age, relationship, generation, business. I was spending $10,000 on TV to run some of these 30-minute shows. We're, we're buying ads for five bucks, 10 bucks, $15 per ad. I mean, it, it's amazing how it's happening. In fact, one more product I have to show you I love. I just love messing with O'Leary, so we're, I'm gonna show you the next one. It's called Glow Bowl. These two uh, inventors said, I have a nightlight for your toilet, okay? And, I, and, and so when they went on Shark Tank, they put O'Leary's face in the toilet. So there, there he is over there, right? And that was a surefire way to get on Shark Tank by making fun of Kevin O'Leary, right? And so, so, but this is the thing. 
Global is another example of a product that didn't work for us on television. We sold millions, but what we did, and understand the funnel concept, we create dozens and dozens and dozens of funnels. And one funnel was going to seniors who get up in the middle of the night, they gotta go to the bathroom. Everyone, I think, can understand that. Uh, that happens for seniors. Uh, but there's, you know, there's another funnel that goes to mothers who have kids that wet the bed because the kids get up in the middle of the night, they wanna go to the bathroom, but it's so dark that they're afraid, so they go back to bed and end up wetting the bed. But that's a whole different funnel to going after mothers. So we have dozens of funnels, and then this went you know, in, on to QVC, HSN, retails, and Walmart, et cetera, because we built the brand by using digital, and this was very, very powerful. In fact, just one last story, and, and we're gonna wrap this up because I wanna, I wanna uh, have uh, my partner is going to be coming up here in a little bit, and 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 Matt's going to tell you about uh, something exciting that we prepared to show you here in just a minute. But uh, there, it, in the world of digital, there's a guy named Michael Dubin, and Michael is in it. He was a 20-some year old young entrepreneur, and he got tired of spending a lot of money for razors. You know, you walk into CVS. Razors are 20 bucks, they're, they're locked up. It's like, it's like, are they in there with bullion or what's going on here, right, you know? So, no, it's, he said, I'm gonna create the Dollar Shave Club. He, he spent $4,000 on a video, had no money. The video went viral and all of a sudden he's got 10,000 customers, 50,000 customers, 100,000 customers and along came Unilever and bought his business for $1 billion, okay? So, I mean, this is the opportunity for, for folks that are out there building businesses. I mean, it's this tech, this digital, the wave of the future here, taking these videos. By the way, he had five minute versions of the video. It's tough to sell something totally in 30 seconds, but you can, you know, maybe a minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Let me tell the story. Let me have some testimonials. Let me have some fun with this, right? Because I gotta say, the old way for me doesn't work anymore. And this guy, Rupert Murdoch, he was the founder of Fox. I used to give him $5 million every year. And you know, I, you'd think he'd have a smile on his face, okay? I mean, come on, Rupert. We did business with him over in Sky Channel, also over in Europe, but um, that's the old way, right? The new way, is not, there's a few channels, the new way is millions of channels that broadcast to a few. And so um, this is what we're here to talk about today is how do we get to, to these niche channels? How do we take amazing video that tells your unique story, supported with testimonials, that's powerful? And that's what we're gonna share with you today. I know um, Matt's gonna be bringing up one of, uh, I think uh, Tiffany's coming up here in a second, but I just have one last slide and, and I'm wrapping up here. And I really wanna thank everybody for listening to, to my side because uh, I have learned quite a bit. We're, you know, we do hundreds of millions of dollars a year with a lot less people, with a digital uh, format that is, is much simpler to get to the customers that we have because we can sell golf products, we can sell fishing products, we can sell eyeglass cleaning products, we can sell coolers, we can sell all the different things we need to be able to get to the customers because we can get to them in a digital fashion. So if there's any doubts in anybody's mind, I asked my buddy, Tony Little, and no, we got a couple here from Tampa, Florida, back here, Valrico, and so I don't know if you've ever run into Tony in the airports, but I said, Tony, I'm gonna be talking as a, a room full of entrepreneurial real estate folks, and do uh, you have any words of wisdom? Because there's a little bit of transition happening out there. For me, there has been, I know, some transitional things going on in real estate, and so Tony said, yeah, I've got four words that I wanna share with everybody, because some people are sitting, hey, can I do it? Is this the right step? What, you know, what do I need to do? And Tony, this, these, are, these are the words of wisdom from Tony to everybody here. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here today. Thank you, thank you. Matt, all right, man. thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey, all right, thanks. Thank you. Do you guys want him to leave just yet? Huh? Wait. Do you guys want him to leave just yet? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So I only, have, I only have two questions. First, uh-oh, <laughs> who's playing music? Who, who would love to see the video that we, that we created? Yeah. All right. 
All right, then dim the lights, let's show it. Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington from ABC's hit TV show, Shark Tank. I'm the co-founder of the As Seen on TV industry and have worked with many great celebrities. I've been featured on some amazing TV shows and have spoken on stages around the world. I'm not only a high level marketer, but I'm also a homeowner and I can tell you that hiring the right real estate agent that combines great marketing with great negotiating skills is critical. Now, if you want to create the most demand for your home and sell it for the most money, you need a rock star agent. And I want to introduce you to the agent whose marketing blew me away, Tiffany Holtz. Welcome, Tiffany Holtz. Good to have you here. Thank you. I have some important questions we're gonna get right in. So, why is a marketing plan so critical in today's real estate marketplace? Well, years ago, we put a house in the MLS, we banged a sign in the yard, and maybe created an ad and ran it to the newspaper. And some real estate agents, that's all they do today. That's right. right? But buyers and sellers are much more demanding today, and they're demanding a much deeper marketing program. So we've combined with social media marketing, we do videography, photography, uh, we have 200 and some websites that our listings get syndicated to. Oh wow, so you have a customized marketing plan for each and every home that you're selling. That's correct. That's pretty amazing. And you also actually have a unique offer, I know, in the marketplace where if the house hasn't sold by the end of the term that you've agreed to, you actually will buy that property. Is that correct? That's right. I guarantee to sell their home at a price and a deadline that we agree to upfront or I'll step in and I'll buy it for cash. Wow. Now, you also have a program that you give people access to the homes actually before these homes hit the market. How does that work? That's where my coming soon program has really elevated us to a different level. We're allowing buyers to see the houses that are coming on the market and we're delivering them the day it's gonna be open for sale. So by the time that they get there, they're not worried about possibly losing their dream home. Our sellers love this because it allows them time to get their home ready for sale and it allows them to have five, six, seven cars out in front looking at their home on opening day. Yeah. You create this competitive spirit on the front end and the sooner you sell a house, the more money you're gonna probably sell for. You spend more money in advertising than any other realtor in the state of Wisconsin and you also sell more homes than any other realtor. How can you do this? We put all the systems and programs in place that we needed, like our guaranteed sale program, our release from a contract if you're not happy with us at any time, yes. our strategic market marketing program for every specific house to make sure we're doing what's right for the client. And that's the way that I've built my business. And at the end of the day, I have a little girl that I go home to that I want to make sure that she remembers and respects her mother and knows that I always did the right thing. That's fantastic. You built your business for all the right reasons and you really put your money where your mouth is. Whenever I do any deal, I look for strong proof that my investment is sound. Let's hear from a few of Tiffany's customers. I've always been a renter, but I've always wanted to own my own home, and I really didn't know exactly what to expect, having never gone through the process before. But I gotta say, uh, from day one, Tiffany and her team really went above and beyond, in my opinion, uh, to help me find a place. I'm a very happy first-time homeowner. Being young sellers, we'd never been through the process before, and we're both so incredibly happy and pleased with the work that Tiffany Holtz did. We would 100%, more than 100% recommend Tiffany Holtz to our friends and family and anyone who's looking to sell their home. We had tried to sell our home on our own um, for approximately two weeks and didn't have any, any viewings or any success. We listed with a different agency and had it on the market approximately three months last fall and they weren't able to assist us with getting it sold. We listed with Tiffany Holtz Group and. 48 hours later had three offers over the asking price and we are currently moving. Wow, that's some strong stuff. And Tiffany, you are the real deal. And I wanna thank you for being with us here today. Great to be here. Do you see now why you need to talk to Tiffany? You owe it to yourself to get the facts. Reach out to Tiffany today at the website and number below and make your next move 
a profitable one. What'd you guys think? All right. Good job. All right. So Tiffany, tell us a little bit about the experience with, with going through this. Yeah, so it was it was wonderful experience because I think as as you said, Kevin, while you were speaking, you, we always do what we always did, right? And so when I came into this and was able to sit down with Kevin and his entire team, it was very interesting because they pulled things out of me that I wouldn't have said on my own. Uh, they, they captured some of the key elements that were really important to get on video that the consumer really wants to hear. And that, to me, was huge because I have a great video crew at home. They did all that B-roll that you saw, and they just didn't have that content. They didn't have that content that I got sitting around that table that day that I'm able to now deliver to the consumer on a million different platforms. So now, how do you see you could use this? I mean, is this just something you, just, you pop on the website? Or what, else, what other vision do you see of how you could use a video like this? I think, again, it goes back to exactly what Kevin was talking about earlier, is that this is a way for us to use video to channel all the people on social media, our, our database through email advertising, the header of your Facebook page, the 15-second roll you can have there, pre-roll on uh, YouTube, uh, tons of social media, Instagram, because um, I think you're going to show in a minute that these are all getting cut down. So you can use them in a, a lot of different versions, just not this long version. Absolutely. And this, you can do this in little chunks. Now, the other, other question I had, do you want to meet the producer that actually not only produces, but knows how to market this? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, to give you a little bit of background on him in, in less than two minutes, let's introduce you to Corey Bergeron. Introducing Corey Bergeron, grossing hundreds of millions of dollars in product sales. Corey Bergeron is the master of customer psychology and the buying decision. Corey has held one of the best sales records in the history of retail television and has been the face of over 300 products on national TV, representing brands like Apple, Dyson, JVC, Sony, Nintendo, Disney, Samsung, ShopVac, Rustoleum, DeLonghi, Hunter, Microsoft, Beats, GoPro, and hundreds more. Corey has been a product expert in floor care, household environment, toys and gaming, electronics, kitchen and culinary, lawn and garden, and DIY, establishing him as one of the most diverse and high-performance talents in retail television history. Corey is the author of the best-selling book, Thousands Per Minute, and is a highly sought-after keynote speaker, offering candid insight into his success, the psychology of the buying decision, and the rapid evolution of video marketing. Previous to Corey's success in front of the camera, he spent almost a decade as a retail television director and videographer. His rare insight into both video production and product sales as a spokesperson led him to found Pitch Video, the ideal video production company and marketing agency for e-retail brands. Corey is on the cutting edge of digital content creation for lead generation and conversion in social media, sales funnels, retail platforms, and marketing campaigns. He is propelling the evolution of marketing forward with unrivaled acumen into how the buying decision is made in our expanding digital universe. If I had a product to sell anywhere, Corey would be one of my first phone calls. He gets results that others can't. Pitchman, host, producer, author, speaker, and CEO, Corey Bergeron. just awesome. I love getting up in front of people who are just driven, hungry entrepreneurs. I can feel it in the room. You can cut it with a knife. Thank you so much for having me here. Who knows what that is, right? Everybody's familiar with this thing. Anybody? Can anybody do that thing? <laughs> no. Raise your hand if you can do the Rubik's Cube. This guy over here, amazing. What's your record time? You can do it. <laughs> so if you're sober, it doesn't happen, right? Four minutes. My fastest time, 23 minutes, I did this. It's how long it took me to peel off all the stickers and put them back on the right side in the right order, right? So one day, my son and I, we decide we're going to have a mandate, right? Me and my 16-year-old my son, we didn't really have a plan, so we decided, you know what, we're going to go down. We live in Tampa. We're going to go to the beach, just sit on the beach and chat. And we stop by Walgreens to get some snacks, and while we're there, he spots this. 
Now, we've all played around with that. He said, well, Dad, this one's like half the size. This one should be easy. We can't do that one. Maybe we can do this one, right? So we went to the beach, and we're sitting on the sand, and we're playing. We're passing it back and forth. And after about an hour, we realized that it wasn't twice as easy. We felt twice as dumb because we couldn't make this happen. <laughs> it's important to know the formula if you're going to do anything. You think this guy knows the formula? <coughs> Check him out. Watch this. Hold on. Oh! 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 Yeah! Yeah! All right, that was that's four and a half seconds. That was the world record for the Rubik's Cube. And what's amazing is just before he starts doing that, it's sitting under a box, so he can't even see it. He's got to pick it up and figure it out and do that. Four and a half seconds. It's important you know the formula. This hangs on the wall of our studio. Kevin and I have a studio together uh, just outside of Tampa, and this is emblazoned on the wall. Why is it there? It's there because it is the root of every single buying decision anybody ever makes. It's because I want every day my team, my crew, my staff, my editors, my producers, I want them to walk in and I want them to remember that this is what we're doing at the end of the day. Maya Angelou understood it, right? Civil rights movement. There was an immense amount of selling this woman had to do for an idea that she had. And she knew that if you're speaking to somebody's heart, that buying decision is made. As a matter of fact, IBM, back in the late 80s, did a study. And they ended up training all their salespeople and said, look, if you can convince somebody's heart, their head will do all the heavy lifting. I bought this house in 2010. And when I bought that house, I did the same thing that I did with every home that I looked at. So what I did was I, I decided to walk around the outside of the house. First thing I always do, I'm looking for cracks and settlement in the foundation. I'm looking at the soffits, making sure there's no rot, no evidence of rodents and that kind of stuff. And I went to walk around this house and the realtor stopped me. He goes, whoa, 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 where do you think you're going? I said, well, I'm gonna take a look at the outside of the house. He goes, yeah, 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 you, we'll, we'll get there. Come here, just a minute, come here. And he walked me through those front doors. And when he threw open those two front doors, I was looking at a huge travertine entryway that dropped down onto Brazilian cherry floors that went straight out to a back wall of solid glass out over the pool, the hot tub, and the deepest part of this immense lake with nothing but preserve on the other side. From my living room, I could have been in the middle of nowhere. Now, if you look to the left of my house, you can see my neighbor was only six feet away, but you never would have known that standing in my living room. Now, after the fact, my wife and I went out on the back porch and we sat there and said, oh, you know what? We always wanted a home office. Well, shoot, this has got an extra room. We could put a home. Didn't we see kids in the neighborhood? We have kids. They'll love the other kids in the neighborhood. Our brains were working overtime to justify why we should buy that house. But we bought that house the moment we walked through that front door. The buying decision is made with the heart. How effective is it? Well, let's take a look real quick here, okay? This, these are the products I sold over a five-year period. There's 250 of them up there. Now, statistically speaking, in 2014, when I made this list, about one in 30 products that were sold on infomercial actually hit. One in 15 were hitting on television retail because television retail has professional buying teams. They've cultivated a demographic that they know very well. They know what products to put in front of them. So statistically speaking, the ones in red should have been my sales record. This is my sales record. It's one in less than two. About 68% of all products I took on the air exceeded network projections right out of the gate on the very first airing because I understood that people need to hear stories and people need to be emotionally moved toward a buying decision. And that's what happened. So what is the power of great video messaging? Well, let's take a look at 2019. 95% of messages are retained from video. Only 10% are retained from text. I'm going to move through these pretty quick here because we got a lot to cover. I want to give you guys some actionable advice. All right, here we go. Landing page stats. How about this? A website is 53 times more likely to reach the front, front page of Google if it has video. Video increases organic search traffic on a website by 157%, and including a video on your landing page can boost your conversion rates, the people who actually pick up the phone and call you and do a deal, by 80%. Social video generates 12 
1,000 or 1,200% more shares than text and images combined. If you're not using video there, you're completely leaving money on the table. Facebook videos, 135% more organic reach. I mean, look at this, look at these trends. Four times as many customers prefer to watch a video rather than reading about it. And you already saw Kevin mention this one. By the way, this was just updated for 2019. More video uploaded in the past 30 days than the past 30 years of all TV content. It used to be the past 30 years of the major networks. Now it's every scrap of TV content that has been uh, used in the past 30 years across all channels, across the, the, the crazy, you know, I don't know if you guys have the satellite subscription with like 300 channels and all that stuff, but there's a lot of content up there, right? 30 days we're blowing away that amount of content online. This one blew my socks off. And I know the reason why, because I'm in the middle of the evolution of this. So I understand why this is the case. 85% of people want to see more video from marketers. That's amazing. By the way, in 2018, it was 65%. It's now 85. Why is it 85%? It's because every teenager with a cell phone is out there uploading that 30 years worth of TV content every single month. We are saturated with people creating user style videos that they put up there and just kind of bootstrap together. It's the marketers who are putting a budget behind their video and creating something that separates them from all of those teenagers with a cell phone. They're creating something unique. They're creating something with amazing messaging. They're creating something of higher production value. They're creating things that people actually wanna see and the stats support that. Forbes magazine, they published this in February of this past year, commercials posing as video content won't get it done. Online brand video must be unique, engaging, and not purely promotional. What they were saying is the same thing that's been said since November of last year. Think about Facebook for a minute. You put a video on Facebook. If it pops up and right away it tries to sell you something, it does yesteryear uh, sales tactics of, you know, hey, buy right now. If that comes up on your timeline, what are you going to do? You are gonna scroll that sucker to get it off there as fast as you possibly can, and so does everybody else. If something pops up and in those first few seconds, and by the way, you need to engage people on Facebook in three seconds with no audio. That's considered a view, by the way. If it pops up and it's purely promotional right out of the gate, you're trying to sell somebody something, not only will they scroll it off their timeline, but it'll actually register a negative connotation with the brand. And the next time they see it, it will resurrect those negative emotions toward that brand or product. People want to be told stories. They want to be emotionally engaged. They wanna see something that's just not salesy and promotional in social media. Because think about it, social media is all about relationship, right? You doing what you do, need people to know, like, and trust you before they will do business with you. That's all about relationship. And social media is one of the most powerful places to do that as long as you have the insight to not try and just make it purely promotional. So here's what I do every day. I have people that come to me and they say, Corey, listen, there's all these options, right? Do I do an explainer video, a how-to video? What's the perfect length? Should I use talent or do voiceover? Is it a branding video? Should it be a, appear raw or produced? There's all of these different options and they wanna know what's the right thing. Well, I'll tell you right away that the engineering is different depending upon your goals. So what we do is we help people identify their goals and then come up with the right video to use. That takes me to my list. This is my top 10 things for you for 2019. If you're using video and marketing, here's what you need to know. Number one, Facebook, I just told you, tell a story or get hurt. You don't want people to have a negative connotation with your product or your brand or your service. You want people to have good feelings the next time they see it. Make sure that you're engaging them and you're not purely promotional. 75%, by the way, last year it was 51%. 75% of all video is being consumed on mobile devices. People are watching it on the go. So you need to make sure that your video is optimized for mobile. Meaning that when you shoot a video, you put all the content in the middle of the screen. So if you need to crop it down to a perfect square, so it's really good for Instagram or Facebook, all of the action is happening right there and your message is solid, uh, messaging is solid. So please remember to, uh, to be intentional about getting it right for mobile. Awareness. There are three types of videos 
that are really, really popular in video marketing right now. The three that you use are an awareness video, an engagement video, and a conversion video. And they are not the same. Kevin referred earlier to tease, seize, and please, or no, wait, tease, please, and seize. I got the order wrong, right? Well, that's basically the same thing. Awareness is tease. Awareness is not looking for the consumer to take any action. It's just raising your flag and waving it around and saying, hey, here I am, let's start that relationship. The next time you see me, you'll know who I am. It's all about getting your customer to realize that they might have a need in their life that they're becoming aware of, and you could be the solution for that. But you're not asking them to take any action. The action is later, engagement. An engagement video is one where you captivate people, you draw them in. Some of the most powerful engagement videos are testimonials. They're extremely powerful. They wrap people into a story and they give the social proof that they need to say, ah, now I've watched the video, I've gotten to the end of the story, you've wrapped me in, you've pulled me, now I'm ready to take some action because I'm aware of your brand. I see the social proof that it's worked for other people. I know, like, and trust you, now I wanna move on and conversion is on the landing page. The conversion video doesn't go in social media. Do not try to close the sale in social media. Remember that that is not a place for closing a sale, that is a place for cultivating a relationship. You go off social media, you go to your landing page, and that is where you guys do your magic and you close that sale, or they pick up the phone, either way. All right, focus on one benefit. This is really important. There are. People have a lot of benefits to what they do. We saw Tiffany's, right? We saw her video, and in her video, she was interviewed by Kevin, and we drew out of her answers to a whole lot of different things that make her amazing at what she does. But in social media, she's not gonna put that entire five-minute video on social media. It's gonna be cut up into individual pieces, and each one of those pieces will address just one benefit at a time. If you get up there and you try and shove a ton of benefits down people's throat, you will lose them. They're only going to be captivated by one thing at a time. So make sure that you're just focused on one. Split test different versions. Always make sure that you're not just married to one video. You get the video, and then you cut it apart in 10 pieces, and you try this piece, you try that piece, you try this piece, because you're gonna find that if you want your cost of acquisition to get as low as possible and get your ROI as high as possible, you need to split test different versions to figure out exactly which one is gonna give you that low CPA. Authenticity is king. There was a time when we could be really, really big and bold in our, in our uh, sales tactics. You know, you still see it from uh, on TV. You see it from car commercials. All they do is they come skidding around the corner. By the way, I never understood that. If I'm gonna buy a car, why do they always show it skidding sideways? And you know, it's like, that doesn't sound safe, right? Okay. Um, those are all about just showing the flashiness of the product. But these days, people wanna feel connected. They want that relationship, and that doesn't happen without authenticity. So remember, in any video that you create, you must remember that authenticity is king. The 60-60 rule. At 60 seconds, 60% 60 of your viewers are gone. They've abandoned it. I don't care if you're showing them Game of Thrones. At 60 seconds, 60% 60 are gone. So remember that you need to keep your video short on Facebook and in social media. All right. Be ready to refresh. Videos have what we call legs. Legs means how long are they gonna work before I've saturated the audience, they're tired of seeing it, I need to give them something new. You wanna make sure that your video repertoire for the next 12 months is stacked full of content. You have a lot of different options so that every quarter you can go out and you can refresh and refresh and refresh and refresh that video and give your audience something new to see. And the last thing, celebritize yourself. You see this a lot these days in uh, influencer marketing, right? You'll get products and they'll find an influencer to back that product and oh my God, all it takes is aligning yourself with one person that has that kind of following, bam, it's magic. There are entire marketing companies wrapped around just that concept that are incredibly successful. All right, so let me show you what we did with Tiffany. So we made a video for Tiffany, you just saw it, it was five minutes long. Now that video, in its full five minute length, is a great corporate positioning video. That can actually go on her landing page because it's a destination video. People have already been 
teased. They already want to know more. They are aware that they have a need in their lives. They're investigating. Then they go to the landing page and they have the patience to sit through a full five minute video and find out everything about Tiffany and what sets her apart. That's a landing page video. But in social media, we need to keep it short and we need to address one thing. So out of that five minute video, there are a ton of different versions that we can pull. Here's one of them that we did. Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington from ABC's hit TV show, Shark Tank, and have worked with many great celebrities. And I want to introduce you to the agent whose marketing blew me away, Tiffany Holtz. Good to have you here. Thank you. So why is a marketing plan so critical in today's real estate marketplace? Buyers and sellers are demanding a much deeper marketing program. So we put all of the systems and programs in place that we needed, like our guaranteed sale program, our release from a contract if you're not happy with us at any time, yes. our strategic marketing program for every specific house to make sure we're doing what's right for the client. Oh wow, so you have a customized marketing plan for each and every home that you're selling. That's correct. That's pretty amazing. Reach out to Tiffany today at the website and number below and make your next move a profitable one. All right, that was 50 seconds. 50 seconds and they got one very powerful message. And by the way, we asked her about six, there were six different segments that we picked up. So any one of those six questions can become its own video. With Kevin at the beginning, Kevin at the end. You've got the face of the rainmaker and you've got the same guy making the recommendation at the end and the meat in the middle is Tiffany being celebritized. 50 seconds, here's another one we did. A seasoned real estate dynamo, Tiffany gets buyers their dream home and sellers the highest price and lightning fast sales. With award-winning acumen, every property sale is executed with unparalleled marketing creativity. It takes someone special to have celebrities and influencers seeking her out and to have buyers and sellers each walking away from a closing table feeling like they got the best part of the deal. Tiffany does it every time. There you go, 30 seconds. And that video is a great awareness video. It's just putting her out there. It's not asking for any action. It's not saying pick up the phone. There's no close. It's just waving her flag in the air and saying, I'm not like anybody else that you've ever seen in your market. Very, very powerful awareness video. So at the end of the day, remember this. I had a mentor of mine, which Kevin actually ended up uh, co-authoring a book with key person of influence, Mr. Daniel Priestley. And Daniel in that book told me when I was a young entrepreneur that my best ideas from five years ago are my baggage today. I challenge you and say your best ideas from two or three years ago are your baggage today. The landscape is changing too fast to sit still. You need to make sure that you're responsive to change. I look forward, I'm excited to work with any one of you in this room. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thanks. Good job. Yeah. Cool. Well, we just have a couple extra minutes before we, before we head into lunch. Um, just a couple quick questions from this. So, Tiffany, with this, now you've seen the C's, please. T's, please. T's, please. please, and C's. Do you feel like this will change the way you do TV? Or how do you see this working in the mix? I, I think this is a great compliment to what we're already doing. Um, so we do use the Barbara Corcoran endorsement on TV, and I think this is an amazing compliment to it. I think that the consumer is already attracted to the fact that we know Barbara and that they're seeing her with us. And now we're, they're seeing us with Kevin when they go to social media, and they're like, how in the world is she doing that? How is she attracting these celebrities to work with her, I think it's an amazing compliment. I think the two go hand in hand. Excellent. And so, and, and Corey, for you, I know you mentioned about slicing and dicing this into different pieces. Yeah. So this isn't just like a one size fits all. No, This is really not. custom. Can you speak to that? Because I know yeah. that's a common question that people, if you could pass the mic down, Tiff, if you want. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. well, I think yeah. I've already got a mic. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's right. I'm got a mic. He's good. So one of the things that uh, we look to do is partner, um, you know, in Tiffany's case, we did this with her, she got to experience it firsthand. We partner with everyone to make sure that we're pulling out of you exactly what really makes you stand apart. What is it that makes you super special? What is the unique thing that you can say about yourself that very few other people can say? Or if everybody's doing it, 
then let's wave your flag a whole lot higher and just decide on the things that really, really are amazing that your, uh, that your audience needs to hear. What do they need to feel in order to be interested in doing business with you? And this is all part of kind of the consultative process up front to make sure that when we actually get into the studio and the cameras are rolling, we are absolutely prepped for a custom message from every person. And Matt, I think Mark Tim is in the back there, yes. part of our team that is part of the process of pulling out. I mean, we spent hours figuring out what are those unique positioning points uh, from Tiffany's side, and that's what we would do with each one of you as part of this process. Mark. If wave, I can, yeah, wave your hand, wave your hand Mark, because if yeah. I can jump in, you are amazing to me to sit around that table and have you tell me, no, no, yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> no, no, that's a good idea. That was that was a huge aha moment, and I, and I took more away from that than just this video, but to go home and implement that in a lot of different areas of my business. So, Kevin, question for you now. We, we, you have worked with hundreds of different companies, but even now, what I really am excited about this is you're still test marketing a lot of these other techniques on social media, yeah. TV. Can you speak to that just for a minute as yeah. far as sharing our knowledge with us as a group? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I kind of mentioned a little bit about this. Corey and I took this product. The, the first step was the old way because this was a couple of years ago when we first started, we tried to do a TV commercial. Uh, just a, a, a standalone direct response call to action did not work. How many authentic videos did we end up creating for viral, for Facebook, for Instagram that ended up creating a $100 million business? Yeah, it's about 15 to 20 videos we about did. 15 to 20. So yep. when we shot with Tiffany, we, we, we overshot. I mean, we, we they've only seen five minutes and one minute. Yeah. We've got dozens and dozens of minutes. We cut a lot of, of content out, that's, right? That's, still a lot. that's there to be cut and pasted and, and little pieces, 60 second, 90 second, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, all different messaging points, as you mentioned, one at a time sometimes. But yep. the five minute is a great piece. We actually created something called an, a newsmercial um, uh, a few years ago where, where we went into an hour news slot on Saturday morning and, and they have 14 minutes of time available to sell for advertising in a one hour show, in a one hour newscast on a Saturday morning. We take a, a, a three to five minute block at the end of the news and, and that five minute piece is five minutes of the 14 minutes, but it can be very, very powerful being part of the news. And so um, this is part of this whole process is we also know, we've, we've been buying tons and tons of media for many, many years, so we know how and where to buy the media also. So you don't totally give up on TV. This is a- No, we so do like, a lot like, of TV still. Yeah. It's just not everything is gonna be a, 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 a just a one-stop a one solution. It, we, we gotta do, we, we do a lot of testing. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm super excited. So the only other last question, if if we're able to partner with these guys and help create videos, would you guys be interested in that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Well, as you know, there's a lot of moving parts that there's a lot of different options that we can create. Some of you have B-roll, some of you need B-roll, some of you want to do 30, some of you want to do five minutes. There's a wide variety of ways we can make this work, but I am just really, really excited that these guys have been willing to make us exclusive in the real estate space, so they will only work with radio and television extras. Kevin, can I ask yeah. why? Why you just well, will do this with us? You know, I'll, I'll say this. I, first of all, I love Barbara, and Barbara called me and said, Kevin, you need to meet Matt Wagner, and what he's doing is amazing. We've taken it this far. It's up to you. Let me hand the baton, and, and you take it to the next level because she knew what we do and how powerful it is. And so, um, yes, we're, we're, we're exclusive with you, Matt, and uh, proud to be here. Well, I'm very excited, too. Yeah. Thank you.